Well, good evening, everybody. Glad to be back in Louisiana, the real L.A. Come on, somebody. And uh, it's a privilege and an honor to be here. And uh, I always love, love coming back here and love being here, uh, especially. And it uh, may have been kind of a whirlwind uh, few months for us. On February 11th of 2018, we planted City Light Church in Las Vegas, Nevada. Because we just felt like Las Vegas probably needed one or two or three or 500 more churches. Y'all know what I'm saying? Like, and so that's what we're doing. And uh, to God be the glory, uh, things are really uh, happening, and God's really blessing the church. And so actually Sunday, pray for us. We go to our fourth Sunday service, and uh, we have three in the morning, and then we'll start a Sunday night. And so um, we're really pumped about it, pumped about what God's doing. But I'm especially glad to be here. And Pastor Aaron, thank you. And Aaron Cody, thank you guys for having me. I just, you know, ob the obvious touch of God is upon your life, and I'm just honored to be your friend. And just watch what's happening year by year, and I'm excited for you. Best is yet to come. New campus, new ground, more souls being saved. How many know there's people in your city that don't know Jesus? Do you all know that? And so we need more campuses. We need more churches. We need God to do more things just like this. And so, um, man, I'm excited. And I want to encourage you to, uh, just if I could throw my little encouragement out to you, the Bible says don't forsake the assembly together and you know, moments like this, we don't do this all the time. We do it once a year. Come on out every night. Uh, the meetings build. The meetings grow. The faith rises. Your faith rises. And church gets better and better. It gets gooder and gooder. Come on, somebody. And so tomorrow will be better than tonight. Friday will be better than tomorrow. On and on and on because we go from glory to glory, faith to faith, strength to strength, even by the Spirit of God. And so... Uh, some of y'all couldn't move tonight. By tomorrow, you're going to be tapping your foot. By Friday, you're going to be moving your knees. Come on, somebody. By Sunday, some of you are going to be jumping. Possessed by the Holy Ghost, okay? So let, so let it build. Let it build. Turn to your neighbor and say, let it build. So be back tomorrow night. There is nothing on TV tomorrow that you cannot record, okay? Be back tomorrow. And, uh, and if... You don't have TiVo, we'll pray for your finances tomorrow at church. Can you say amen? All right. I know you love your pastors, but I especially do, and I want them to know how much you love them. So can you put your hands together for your pastors? Come on. Go ahead. Give them a, give them a great clap. Really show some honor tonight. We love you. We honor you. We thank God for you. Praise the Lord. 1 Samuel 17, while you're turning there, I think we might have a daughter of my, uh, daughter of my picture. Picture of my daughter. Uh, this, is our, this is our little Goldie Ray. Hey, girl. It's our little baby girl. Two years old, November 7th. And so um, she's just the light of our life. We're, we're loving her. We wanted to have another baby in 2018, but we had a church baby instead. Y'all know what I'm saying? So we're doing church right now. And then 2019, we want to give her a little brother. That's the plan. So anyway... That's Goldie Ray. My wife and I just celebrated 12 years of marriage, and um, we're just grateful for it. And so God is good. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 32. These are the words of David speaking of his enemy, Goliath. And David said, don't worry about this Philistine. I'll go fight him. Don't be ridiculous, Saul replied. There's no way you could fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy. He's been a man of war since his youth. But David persisted. I've been taking care of my father's sheep and goats. And when a lion or bear comes to steal the lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and I rescue the lamb from its mouth. Come on, David was from Louisiana. Can you say amen? Like, if the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw, I club it to death. I've done this to both lions and bears and alligators, and I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too. For he has defied the armies of the living God. Here's our core verse. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. One more passage. This is Acts chapter 13 and verse 22. But God removed Saul and replaced him with David, a man whom God said, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. 
Uh, verse 37, one more time. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine too. I want to preach just for a couple of minutes from the subject. The Lord who rescued me will rescue me. The Lord who rescued me will rescue me. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you're doing tonight, what you're going to be doing over the next four or five days. I just thank you, Lord, right now, Holy Spirit, anoint this moment, anoint me to preach, and anoint every one of us, including me, to hear your word. Because we know one word from God can change our life. One phrase from heaven can change our destiny. Just one sentence from your mouth can change our family tree forever. So Holy Spirit, speak. Your servants are listening. We have come for a word from heaven. And we thank you that you will speak tonight. Give us faith now to receive the word, live it out, see it come to pass in our own life. In the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone said amen. And amen. And amen. Thank you so much. Appreciate you, bro. I do really love Acts chapter 13. It's one of my favorite passages of Scripture and probably maybe the first Scripture that I personally ever remember memorizing and, and it really becoming real to me. It was, it was such a significant Scripture for me because I think Acts 13 tells us so much about who God is. It tells us so much about how He interacts with His people. It tells us so much about who we are and it tells us so much about not only our history but also about our future. It, it says so much about God because it says, I have found. And that is really good news to me that God was looking for me. <laughs> I don't know how you got saved, but I wasn't looking for God. And before I ever called upon the name of Jesus, he called upon the name of Jabin. And before I was ever looking for God, God was looking for me. God was searching me out, and God knew where to find me. God knows your address. God knows where you live. God knows what you're doing. God knows you and God is looking for you. And some of you think you're here because mama drug you here or because you're here for a boyfriend or a girlfriend or you're here because, well, it's Wednesday night. Pastor said I got to be here. I would submit to you that the very hand of God has been looking for you, been calling you, been drawing you to this moment. And I believe you're in the middle of a miracle moment. Can I hear an amen? God... I found, I found David. That lets me know that God knows my name. <laughs> he knows me. He knows me intimately and he loves me. He's not intimidated by me. He's not intimidated by my weakness. He's not intimidated by my struggle. He's not intimidated by where I've been. He knows me. He loves me. He calls me. I found David, son of Jesse. That means he knows my family tree. <laughs> Anybody got some crazy aunties, uncles, maybe a dad or mom? Come on, somebody. Maybe some people, you love them, but you don't really want them coming to church with you because you don't know how they'd act. Amen, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God says, I know where you come from. I know what side of tracks you're on, and I'm not intimidated by your issues. I'm not intimidated by your family. I'm not intimidated by what you've been through. I'm not intimidated by the struggle that you've been in. I, I love you, and I'm calling you, and I'm taking into account your struggles. I'm taking into account your history. I'm taking into account everything you've been through and everything your family has been through, and I'm okay with it because I'm bigger than that. I found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. Now, this is so huge because our God is a heart God. It's not all right here. You can't come to a church like this and process everything right here. You can't truly know God and truly know the Holy Spirit right here. There has to be something from the heart. We don't worship from the head. We worship from the heart. We don't praise from our intellect. We praise from our spirit. And what God is looking for is not intellect. What God is looking for is not education. What God is looking for is not your pedigree. What God is looking for is willingness. He said, he said if you are willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. I've come to submit to you, if you're willing, you'll be obedient. Because God just cares about the heart. He's saying, look, I know you don't have it all together. I'm not looking for strength. I'm not looking for perfection. I'm just looking for anybody whose heart would lean in my direction. Do I have anybody whose heart is after God? I think, I think that's why you're here. 
Sorry, sound guy, I'm screaming, I know, but I only got one volume, and it's loud, amen. <laughs> and he will do. Oh, that is such good news because it means that God does not only know my history, He's got a plan for my destiny. He's got a plan for my future. He will do everything I've called him to do. That means that God didn't just save me. God called me. It means that God is not just saving my soul for heaven, but he's actually going to use my life on earth to impact eternity. This is such good news. This is the gospel. This is who Jesus is. This is why we worship. This is why we love God. This is why we serve God because he knows us greatly and he knows us intimately yet he loves us deeply and he will not give up on us this is our God you know just on October 1st in Vegas we remembered that one man just one man one man brought death destruction and a spirit of fear to our city he injured over 500 people and he killed over 50 people and just one man gave himself over to darkness. Just one man gave himself over to evil. Just one man gave himself over to the power of Satan. And he could literally change the atmosphere of a city of 2.2 million people. Just one man. And it got me thinking, if one man could make a choice to bring so much pain to a city, if one man could make a choice to release a spirit in a city, if one man could just make a choice to give himself over to something beyond himself and bring so much pain, what could many men and many women, what could a church do if they would give their life over to the light of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the love of God? What if we stopped talking ourselves out of doing something great for God and just said yes to Jesus and said, God, if one man can bring harm to a city, what can a church do? What can we do? What can we do in two campuses? What can we do in this city? I I'm tired of talking ourselves out of greatness. I believe it's time to say yes fully to the life and light of Jesus Christ and see what God would do with a church that does not say yes and no, but only says yes. But life is all about choices. We choose the way of God or we choose the way of the world. We choose light or we choose darkness. We choose God's way or we choose our own way. And I wish it wasn't so black and white, but it really is. Life is all about choices. See, we're going to read about David and Goliath. David, young David, teenager David had to make a choice. He, he did not know that on that day he was going to have to fight Goliath. Read your Bible. David was woke up by his father and Jesse said, hey, here's some bread, here's some cheese. I need you to go to the battle and serve your brothers. David did not go to the battle lines to fight. David went to the battle lines to serve his brothers some bread and cheese. And if I could just be unspiritual for one moment, I just want to thank God for bread and cheese. Amen. I, I ain't got no prophetic transliteration. I ain't got no Jesus is the bread. Amen. I just came to tell somebody, thank you, Jesus, for bread and cheese. And Matt, I know you're on keto, but some of us are on carbo. And we love you. But some of us, we're on a different journey with Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I love your Facebook post, but you're depressing me. Amen. Because I, I'm trying to be Bible. Jesse didn't send him with kale and bacon. Amen. And avocado. Come on, somebody. Oh, you keto people. We are, we are so mad at you. But we're happy for you. Praise the Lord. You're teaching us how to forgive. Amen. <laughs> and bread and cheese, and he... And he went to the battle line. Some of y'all going to laugh tonight, I promise, in Jesus' name. I feel it. He, he, he goes to the battle lines to serve his brothers, had no idea that on that day he was going to have to fight Goliath. But friend, I got news for you. It's not bad news. It's not really good news. It's just news. It's just the truth. 
we don't always choose our giants. <laughs> we rarely choose our Goliath. Most of the time, our giant chooses us. We didn't plan it. We didn't choose it. We didn't expect it. But here we are. We did not plan the fight we're in, but here we are. And though we don't always choose our fight, hear me, friend, you are going to have to choose to fight. Though we don't always choose our storm, we're going to choo we're gonna have to choose to trust Jesus in the boat, in the storm. Though we don't always choose our giant, we are going to have to choose to stand in the middle of a valley and say, though I walk through the valley... I will fear no evil because God's with me. His rod and his staff come for me. Goodness and mercy are following me. I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I don't necessarily like the fight I'm in, but I do know one thing. I ain't going to quit on the fight. Because David had a choice. Do I, do I run back to dad and hang with the sheep and become a nameless faceless repeat of history? Or do I take a stand? Change my life. Change the future of my family. Change everything about me. David said, I want to go fight him. And the Bible said in verse 16 that Goliath would go out every morning and every night. Every morning and every night, every morning and every night, every morning and every night, he would curse the people of God. Every morning and every night. Man, the devil's consistent. Did anybody just hear what I just said? I said the devil's consistent. That, that's why it's not legalism for us to ask you to read your Bible every day. Because the devil's talking every day. Come on, somebody. And we better be listening to God every day. Because he, he, he's not going to stop. And the, and the enemy is so consistent speaking to the people of God. And in verse 23, the Bible says this, that he went out with his usual taunts. Usual. No new tricks, usual. And I want to I submit to you that your taunt might be a little different than my taunt. And my taunt may be a little different than your taunt. And, and the person sitting next to you, their taunt might be a little different than yours. But, but we all have a taunt from the devil. And he's, he's talking and he's trying to tear us away from the promise that is right in front of us. He's trying to distract. He's trying to discourage us from entering into everything God has for us. See, the enemy can't stop us, so instead he does everything he can to discourage us. Your enemy is a speaking enemy, and since he knows he cannot touch you, he has to stop you with his words. Am I helping anybody? Week after week, month after month, day after day, every morning, every night. And for some of you, he's saying, your marriage is never going to work. For some of you, he's saying, you're never going to break that addiction. For others of you, he's saying, you're never going to prosper. For others of you, saying, you're never going to be healed. But he knows what to tell you every morning and every night to try to stop you from inheriting all that God has for you, telling you you'll never make it, telling you you'll never be able to do it, telling you it's always been this way and it'll always be this way. But David said, I believe that we can see this giant fall. And I've just come to tell somebody, I believe we can see that giant fall tonight in Jesus' name. But when David says this, verse 25, Saul goes, have you seen the giant? Like, like he's big. And you're a scrawny teenager. Have you heard this dude talk? See, because for 40 days and 40 nights, Saul is staring at an enemy. Wow. Because it is possible to be the people of God but have more faith in your enemy. Did you hear what Saul said? You're just a boy. He's been a man of war since his youth. <laughs> Saul said, he's been grown since he was a kid. For 40 days and 40 nights, Saul lived under the shadow of his enemy. 
But that's not where David was. David was on the backside of a hill somewhere with a guitar singing praises to God. Miracle can happen now. He was just going for it. So then when David rocks up, he looks at Goliath. He goes, whoa, you're big. But, but, but you're not as big as God. <laughs> See, because for 40 days and 40 nights, Saul had lived, up, lived under the shadow of Goliath. But for 40 days and 40 nights, David had been in Psalm 91. He had been under the shadow of the Almighty. Come on, somebody. I said, come on, somebody. Say amen. And so, yes, his giant was big, but not nearly as big as the shadow of Almighty God that David lived under. And David said, I believe we can do something about this giant. So he runs to the river and he grabs five smooth stones. He puts them in his pouch and he said, I want to go after him. And I want to give you five things quickly from the text that I believe we'll need if we ever face a giant. And I, and I, wish, I wish I could tell you, you know, I'm a, I'm a born and bred word of faith boy. So I wish I could tell you, here's five keys to a giant free life. <laughs> that, that, those keys are coming in heaven, okay? But until heaven, we have a big destiny. We got a big world to reach. We got a lot of promises to inherit. And we got a lot of blessings that are, that are in our name for our family and for our future generations. And what that means is, it means the enemy's going to try to stop us and intimidate us with the voice of a giant. And so I wish I could just promise you a giant free life. It doesn't work that way, but I can promise you victory from God's word so that every time a giant rises, you can conquer that thing in the name of Jesus. See the victory and see the fullness of what God has for you. Say amen, everybody. Number one, number one, if you ever face a giant, you need a God focus. You need a God focus. See, before verse 26, Goliath is talking about God's people and God's people are talking about Goliath, but nobody is talking about God. And in verse 26, David says, who is this who would defy the armies of, hear this phrase, the armies of the living God? David made this issue a God issue. I just want to tell you the fight you're in is a God issue. It's a spiritual issue. We do not battle against flesh and blood, but principalities and power. I want you to know that your spouse is not the problem. Your job is not the problem. Your president is not the problem. The, the, the whatever you have decided is your problem is probably not your problem. There are spiritual things at play. And instead of just staring at your giant going, oh, 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 I'm the victim, it's time to say, God, I need you to get involved in the situations in my life. It is so easy to be the people of God but never invite God into our situation. It is so easy to go to heaven but never invite heaven down to earth. It is so easy to clap your hands and praise your God and be really churchy right here but then on Monday forget all about him. And David said, I believe that if I'm concerned, God is concerned. If I'm thinking about it, God's thinking about it. This is not just a natural fight. This is a God fight. I'm gonna get a God focus. I'm gonna bring God into my family, God into my situation. God into my finances. Come on. This is a God issue. Say amen. amen. David said, I believe God cares because David knew God. David was a worshiper. To David, God was awesome. To David, God was a warrior. To David, God was alive. To David, God was concerned and involved. David knew God. Therefore, he knew God would care. And he said, I'm not going to stare at this giant. I'm going to stare at God. Because my life is moving in the direction of my focus. Who's bigger to you, friend? Your mountain or your God? Your enemy or your God? Your giant or your God? Your fears or your God? You must get a God revelation if you're ever going to see victory. This is why this same David would write, great is the Lord. And what? Greatly to be praised. Uh, because, see, your praise tonight looked like your revelation of God. Some of y'all were apathetic tonight. It's okay. I wasn't judging. It's kind of, 
I know breakthrough. By faith, I see him. You, you know why your praise is apathetic? Because you think God's apathetic. You don't think God cares. For some of you, your voice was real weak. Why? Because you're not convinced God is strong. For some of you, you were distracted because you're not, you're not convinced that God isn't distracted. So it shows in your praise. But David said, I know my God is great. I know my God is awesome. I know my God is a warrior. I know my God is mighty. I know my God is a fighter. I know my God is amazing. And it's going to show up in my praise. I know my God's wild, so my praise is going to be wild. I know my God is great, so my praise is going to be great. I know my God is big, so my song is going to be big. Anybody know God is great? Can we take a praise break real quick? Hey! Can I get like 50 people to just shout, lose your mind, if you know that your God is an awesome God, deserves an awesome praise, great is, he's greater than my giant, greater than my mountain, greater than the sickness, greater than the economy, greater than the disease, greater than what the doctor said, the lawyer said, my mama said, my God is great. Oh, come on, give him a great praise one time. He's worthy. Woo. Yes, my giant's big, but God is bigger. And my praise is going to dictate my life. Not my giant. Number two, I need a ridiculous reality. David said, don't worry, verse 32, this is our text, don't worry, I'll fight him. Saul said, don't be ridiculous. You know, you're either going to be a don't worry person or a don't be ridiculous person. You're going to be a person of faith or doubt. You're either going to look in the natural or in the spirit. So you walk into church. Pastor, don't be ridiculous. We don't need another campus. There's probably a church over there. <laughs> Am I telling the truth, somebody? Well, I mean, how are we going to work? We're going to get more ushers. and We got enough worship team? No. There's always going to be more need. There's always going to be more vision than we, can, than we can have. God forbid we just have so much of everything. <laughs> like we're adding the fourth service people coming up to me like so do we have like musicians for the first or fourth service I, said, I don't know I know we got a computer we can hit the tracks go nilly vanilly if we have to cause like cause we're doing it cause there's 2.2 million people in our city so we need more services and there's, and there's people on the other side of that river that need a church so well do we have no 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 there's always gonna be more vision than supply that's where Jehovah Jireh shows up and provides. I, I want to be a don't worry, don't worry, pastor, we'll do it. Another campus, let's go. Want to go to New Orleans? Turn up, I'll make the drive. <laughs> want to go to Mississippi? I'm down. I like their tamales. Let's go. I want to be a don't worry person. Oh, absolutely. Oh, souls to be saved? I'm in. We need more vision? Let's go. Need more provision? I'm down. I want to be a don't worry person. I want to be a person of faith. I'll go serve on, on Sunday night. That's great. I'll TiVo the, the Saints game. I'll be okay. <laughs> Some of you are like, don't talk about my <laughs> preacher. Okay. Saul said, you're just a boy. But wait a minute. Saul said, you're a boy. God said, I found a man. Who are you listening to, Saul or the Holy Spirit? Religion or the kingdom? Saul said, you're a boy. God said, you're a man. Saul saw a kid. God saw a king. And you're going to have to decide who you're going to, whose voice you're going to let dictate your life. And I've just decided I'm going to have a ridiculous reality 
and I'm going to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to be a don't worry person. I'm going to be a person that's just going to believe God, step out on the water, and I'm not going to fear. Saul's trying to talk him out of it. But David, verse 34, David persisted. David persisted. David pressed through the doubt. Here's why. Because David knew that Goliath was not a death sentence. David knew Goliath was an opportunity. I've just come to tell you, your giant is not a death sentence. I've just come to tell you, the current fight you're in, you're not going to die in that fight. It's actually an opportunity for promotion. <laughs> you're actually going to go higher. You're actually going to be more blessed. Some of you are so discouraged that you're in a fight. In reality, it's the very fight that's elevating you. You're getting stronger. You're getting bigger on the inside. Your faith is growing. The gi See, giants always tell on themselves. Ah! That's why, that's why the Bible says the foolishness of God is still wise. Like, like your, your enemy always tells on himself. Here's why. Because Goliath in the Hebrew language means uncover, reveal, disclose. I'm about to run, but I'm trying to contain myself because I'm in skinny jeans and I can't really run. I'm about to trot around this place. I'm also like right here, like right there. April's like, dance. I'm like, I can't, but I'm with you in the spirit. Disclose. I'm sorry, I'm getting goofy. There's, it is, there is a funny anointing, right, in this. It makes you, this makes it. <laughs> Goliath means to reveal, disclose, to make oneself known. Your giant's telling on itself. Your enemy is revealing things and disclosing information. Your giant that you're currently facing is actually revealing that you are bigger on the inside than your giant is on the outside. Your giant is disclosing that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Your giants reveal your calling. Your giants uncover your gifting. Your giants make known your anointing to others. Your giants cause you to discover the greatness of God. The giant is trying to show you how big and bad he is, but in reality, while he's screaming at you, the Lord God Almighty is right behind him showing you how small he really is in this fight you will not die you will see the greatness of your God come on shout with me one time come on my fight caused me to discover that I was more anointed than I thought I didn't know I could pray like I could pray, but now that I'm in Vegas and I've been here for eight months and all of a sudden I'm falling on my knees, I didn't know I could pray an hour. I didn't know I could pray two hours. I didn't know I could seek God all day going, God, if you don't show up, when we got 30 no's from 30 different locations telling us you can't meet there, all of a sudden I realized that there was another power source on the inside of me. And it was never about God testing me. It was about God showing me how great he was, how faithful he was. Ah! Come on, somebody. Your giants are telling on themselves. You're discovering a source you didn't know was there. And while you're falling to your face, going lower, God is lifting you and you're going higher and you don't even know it. I didn't know how much supply was on the inside. 
I didn't know how anointed I could be until, until I'm meeting with a guy and he's looking at me across the table going, I don't, I don't love my wife no more and I'm going to leave my family and I don't know when I'm going to do it, but I'm about to do it. And all of a sudden there's a new source on the inside of me going, in the name of Jesus. And I had to learn how to pray and I had to learn how to pull that guy through that thing and get him through on to the other side and now they're walking in a miracle marriage. I didn't know how strong I could be till I had to walk into a hospital with a guy that just had a stroke and lay my hands on him and say in the name of Jesus I command your face to function again I command the right side of your body to move again it was the giant that did not reveal it didn't reveal how big the giant was it revealed how great God is number three I need a miracle memory not just a ridiculous reality, I need a miracle memory. David goes, let me tell you why I believe I, I can face this guy. Because I fought the lion. And he goes past. And I fought the bear. I've, I've dealt with opponents that are bigger than me. I've dealt with issues that are greater than me. But I have an advantage. And the advantage is in the King James when David goes, I fought the lion, I fought the bear, and I'll fight this uncircumcised Philistine. Yes. And, you know, David kind of cusses him out, you know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> it was kind of, you know, I fought the lion, you could just imagine the warriors, yeah. And I fought the bear. Yeah, who is this? Other? Oh, David. Oh, man, why you got to? <laughs> like a your mama joke would have cut it. <laughs> but we know circumcision was a sign of covenant. <laughs> David is saying, I have the advantage. I had the advantage with the lion. I had the advantage with the bear. I have the advantage with, with this giant. I have the advantage because I have a covenant. <laughs> I have what none of them had. I have what Goliath does. Goliath is bigger than me, stronger than me, has more experience than me, is a better warrior than me, a better talker than me. But, but he does not have the covenant that I have. And my God said in Psalm 89, I will not break my covenant. I'll never forget my covenant. I will not let a word come out of my mouth that is a lie. Listen to me, friend. You have the advantage over the enemy because you have a covenant advantage. The moment that Jesus hung on that cross and cut covenant with us and said, this is my covenant in my blood, and when his hands were cut, his feet were cut, his side was cut, his forehead was cut, his back was cut, when his body was opened up and he cut covenant with his church, from that moment we have had the advantage over the devil, over giants, over Goliaths, over demons. So though the situation might feel bigger than you, it's not bigger than the covenant and the promise that is over your life. David said, I have the advantage because I have a covenant. And I've just come to remind somebody, you have the advantage because you have a covenant. And then David reminds himself of the faithfulness of God. And by the way, you are either going to have a miracle memory or a victim mentality. But you can't have both. See, because David could have talked about the fact that his brothers hated him. Could have talked about the fact that his father forgot him. Could have talked about the fact that he didn't look like his other siblings. This is the original keeping up with the whoever reality show right here. This is it right here. Do you remember that when David came over the mountain? Saul goes, I mean Samuel goes, he don't look like everybody else in the... Jesse, you're the, this is your boy, Jesse. Go, long story, long story. Just move along, move along. <laughs> He's ruddy. He doesn't have the same skin color, hair color as your, are you? Yeah, okay, just move along, move along, move along. And he could have, he could have talked about how bad it's been. And it was. David said, my life was conceived in sin. 
That was not a theological statement. He was talking about what his father did. But instead of talking about how bad it was, he starts talking about how good God has been. Can we just remember for one moment? Oh, I know we got challenges. And I, we could all grab this mic and talk about how bad life has been, how tough life has been, and how someone broke your heart and someone mistreated you. And we could all share our own story, and it's real. And it's a real part of our life, and it's a real part of our testimony. But listen, the strength does not lie in what was done to us. Our strength lies in what God has done for us. We got to get a miracle memory that says if God was faithful, he will be faithful. And if he is faithful, he will always be faithful. So I'm going to choose to thank God for what he's already done, knowing that what he has done is the clearest picture of what he will do. I got a miracle memory. But lastly, well, I got two more, sorry. Number four, I got to have a dedication to my future. Not just a miracle memory, I got to have a dedication to my future. Matt, you could come up. Um, Saul finally gives in. He says, okay, you know what, if you want to fight him, go for it. But... You need to wear my armor. David puts on the armor. He tries to move, and he can't. He tries to do what he does, anointed by God, and he can't. And he looks at Saul in verse 39, and he says, Saul, with all due respect, I can't go in these. Go, future, go, promise, go, destiny. Go, purpose. Go where God's calling him to go. Go into the fullness of his calling. Saul, I can't go in these. See, Saul had been rejected. We read it in Acts 13, 22. What had been rejected by God is now trying to get on what has been anointed by God. And if you're not careful... You will be anointed and bound. Called and burdened. Destined. Carrying a weight you were never supposed to carry. Hebrews 12 calls them weights and sins. Not every weight is a sin, but every weight becomes a sin if you don't reject it. And what that looks like is you're anointed by God, you're obeying God, you're doing what God's called you to do, but you're doing it with a burden, you're doing it with weight, you're doing it using too much energy. And so though Jesus said my yoke would be easy, my burden would be light, we're tired and we're burnt out. Why? Because we are trying to do everything God has anointed us to do while still carrying things that God has rejected. Notice who put it on him. Not his hater. Okay, and I love preaching about haters. It's fun. I just did a whole series on Joseph. Talked about his haters, his brothers. It was awesome. But, but Saul wasn't a hater yet. At this point in the, in the story, Saul loved David. Because not only yet can a hater be an issue, but I think we have to be more concerned with lovers. People who love us, but maybe don't have the mind of God for us. They want what's best for us. They just don't know how to go about it. It wasn't that Saul hated David. Saul loved David. He just didn't have the mind of the Holy Spirit for David. Um, I'll never forget turning on Christian TV as a kid. I, I just, I don't know why I remember this, but I remember it so clearly. Robert Schuler standing in the Crystal Cathedral. And I just remember him looking into that camera and going, Jesus loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. Let's remember that. I want to tell some of you, there's some people who love you. 
and have a wonderful plan for your life. It's just not God's plan. Oh, you go to that church? What did they do with the money? I know. It, I heard they were just. Where did they know? Where, where did the money go? Whenever you in and they don't hate you. They love you. They just don't have faith. I heard they just like they run around and they just crazy and and the music's loud and they love you. They just don't understand what's on your life and what's on this church. Oh, you go to Hankins? You go over to Hankins? I heard they got a 747 in their backyard. Is that what I heard? They got an airplane and a... And they went, no, stupid. I heard they bought 17 Bentleys and put them all together, melted them into one limo. That's what I heard. I never seen it, but I heard it. No, you didn't. <laughs> Where is this coming from? My point is, you, if you ever become a part of a, of a big church trying to do a big thing, there will be small people. They're not bad people. They love you. They just, and y'all laughing because you know it's the truth. They just don't understand what's on this church and they don't understand what's on you. So they try to clothe you with stuff. So a perfect example is for me, my mama. My mama loved me. My mama loved me. She's crazy about me. She's mama bear. She loves me. But my mama lives in Belen, New Mexico, population 1,700, more dairy cows than humans. That's not a joke. Thank you for laughing. And my mama, my mama, every time I talk to her, goes, Ay, mijo. Mijo, when are you moving home, mijo? And I go, Mom, Mijo's like, I don't know, all you white people, I can't explain it right now, okay? But it's like a little Mexican thing. That's what we say, hito, mijito, mijo. Ay, my baby, my baby, you know. So she goes, Mijo, when are you moving home? I go, Mom, I'm, I'm home. I live in Las Vegas. You've been to my house. No, 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 but Mijo, when are you moving back, Mijo, to home? She loves me. I go, Mom, actually, we got this church. We got four services. I'm trying to help a lot of people. No, 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 you can plant a church here, mijo. We need a church too. She loves me. But she doesn't have, like, the mind of God for me because she can't. got to be so dedicated to your future friend that you you cannot let the voices of Saul well-meaning voices of Saul talk you out of the fullness of what God has for you in your destiny number five and the team can come if y'all want to this is my favorite point and I'm going to preach quick If you're facing a giant, we must have radical faith. Everyone say faith. One more time. Come on, say faith. I love this because uh, I told you that the enemy is a speaking enemy. The enemy talks. And I love this because now David finally talks back to the enemy. (laughs) And in verse 47... Verse 47, David starts walking through the valley of the shadow of death. He starts, he starts stepping up on Goliath. And he says, Goliath, I, I have news for you. I got, I got news for you. This is not your fight. And Goliath, this isn't even my fight. Verse 47 says, Goliath, this is the Lord's battle. Come on, somebody. This is the Lord's battle battle. The moment you messed with God's people, you messed with God. This is the Lord's battle and he will give you to us. He will give you to me. Goliath, the moment you touched me, the moment you spoke against us, God personally got involved. And this is no longer my fight. 
This is God's fight. This is why whenever Saul in the New Testament persecutes the church, Jesus says, hey, Saul, accept or not. Why are you persecuting me? Saul says, who are you? He said, I'm Jesus, whom you're persecuting. Saul never touched Jesus. But the moment Saul touched the church, he touched the head of the church. And the moment that giant started messing with you, he started messing with Jesus. <laughs> Come on, somebody. And David said, this is no longer my fight. I'm simply the human representation on the earth. But this is actually the Lord's battle. And Goliath, I got news for you. Bad news for you, good news for me. Our God has never lost a battle. He's got a better record than Khabib, Floyd Money Mayweather, you name it. Our God has never lost and he's not gonna start with you. Our God has never failed and he's not gonna start with you. Our God has never lost a battle and he's not about to start with me. This is the Lord's battle. This is God's fight. And I can take courage tonight. I can praise tonight. I can shout tonight. I can clap tonight knowing that God is going to fight for me. Come on, stand to your feet all over this room. And so, and so, the Lord who rescued me. Well, Jabin, when did the Lord rescue me? He rescued you on the cross 2,000 years ago when he conquered death, hell, and the grave. And now because he's done that, you can be assured that he can do whatever you're facing right now. See, this is my favorite scripture right now in the Bible is Romans 8.32 because it says if God did not spare his son, will he not give us all these other things? Okay. On Christmas morning, we flew into New Mexico to visit our family and I went, walked into my house, or excuse me, my father-in-law's house, and my in-law's house, and I said, hello, I said, hello, 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 good to see you guys. And then I walked to the kitchen and I started getting food out of the fridge. I got some turkey and some stuff in, got a Coke, got, got some different things, started making a plate. And I never asked permission. And I never said, hey, hey, Norm, this is my father-in-law, hey, Norm, is it okay if I have some turkey? And the reason I didn't think he would be concerned is because on August 4th, 2006, he walked down a center aisle with his daughter and the preacher said, who gives this woman to be married to this man? And he said, I do. And so from August 4th, 2006, he gave me the greatest gift he could give me. He gave me his child. And I figured if he gave me his child, he's probably not gonna trip over Turkey. And I just come to tell somebody, the father gave you Jesus. I need somebody to shout right now. Break this room open with me right now. I said, the Father gave you his son? Can he not give you prosperity? Can he not give you healing? Can he not give you the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Can he not fix your marriage? Can he not heal you, deliver you, answer you? The Lord who rescued me will rescue me from this giant. He is faithful. Woo. So I will not fear. Because I'm not, I might be in a fight, but I'm not fighting for victory. I'm fighting from victory. Maybe I didn't choose the fight, but if I'm in it, God's in it. And if God's in it, I win. If you would like more information about Christian Worship Center, please visit our website at christianworshipcenter.com.